Hi, I'm Dr. LeHugh. I'm the wildlife veterinarian for the Nevada Department of Wildlife. Today we're going to show you how to collect a chronic wasting disease sample. This is something you can do in the field after harvesting your animal and helps us keep track of whether or not Nevada remains CWD free. So chronic wasting disease or CWD is a disease that's caused by a protein otherwise known as a prion. And unlike uh, other common diseases that are caused by viruses and bacteria, this makes this disease really hardy and makes it basically impossible to eradicate once on the landscape. So that's why we're trying to do our part to both keep Nevada CWD free and li limit its spread. And also, it means it's really important for us to continue to do surveillance across the state to get an idea of whether or not the disease is present. So the two samples we're going to take for chronic wasting disease sample are the retropharyngeal lymph nodes and the obex. The lymph nodes are found um, right about here, but deeper. We'll show you that in a minute. The obex is that bottom part of the brain stem. Now, while we encourage you to take both samples, uh, the brain stem is a little harder to get to, so if you can, if you're only able to get those lymph nodes, still please send them to us, especially with deer. Uh, we can still do a, quite a lot of testing, but even for elk, um, they're still uh, a good sample. So when you're taking a CWD sample, it's nice to have a few pieces of equipment. A large knife like this, um, or just a larger hunting knife, uh, works well for cutting down on the neck and works fine for taking out the lymph nodes. For taking the obex, or for doing the whole thing, it's nice to have something like a Havilon. Um, in a pinch for the uh, for, in a pinch for the obex, you can also use something like a plastic knife that you would buy at any um, grocery store. And then for grabbing tissue, you can do it with your fingers, but it's nice to have something else. Uh, something like a pair of forceps or a Leatherman, any pair of pliers, something like that's also nice to have. So the first thing to do when taking a CWD sample is to get your animal positioned correctly. And what that means uh, is getting that usually a head off something like a tailgate. Obviously, if you're doing an elk, it might be something on the ground, something that's gonna allow you to get that neck, the bottom of the neck up, and it's gonna allow you to bend that head down. And that's gonna allow you to expose the neck where you're gonna need to make your cut. Now next, you're gonna find the back of the jaw right here, go to the center line, find your larynx, and find that little divot in the larynx. And that's going to be your center line where you're going to cut down and back towards the ear. And as you cut down, you, you can keep using uh, the tailgate to provide some leverage and kind of pull that head apart. We're going to do a cut right here on the neck. So if you're going to do a shoulder mount, you want to go ahead and cape out the animal before you make this cut. Otherwise, you're going to make a cut uh, right across where your cape is. So you're going to find your location and just make a cut right down towards the back of the ears and um, one thing to, f to find that obex or where to find where you're going to disarticulate the spine to get into the obex you can put your thumb there and just move the head up and down and you can feel that joint if you just move it along it's moving right there you're just going to want to cut towards it and so your lymph nodes are going to be right in here but what you're going to want to do sometimes the easiest thing is to go ahead and disarticulate the head and you're just going to keep cutting down until you see the back of the skull which is these two bones right here and then you just come along here you cut the ligaments that attach the skull. And then you're going to want to cut the spinal cord is right here with the what I'm showing with the point of my knife. And this is not the part you need, so you can just go ahead and cut right across that to help release the rest of the head. So one way to find the lymph nodes is to find the jaw with your thumbs, follow the jaw back, find the end of it, turn your thumb sideways, push them in, your lymph nodes are going to be right in there. 
So you're just going to cut down through the tissue. Sometimes you can use your hand to, to feel them. You can cut it in half. So you can see this one's a little old, but you can see that center of that lymph node is a little darker than the edge of it, telling you a lymph node. The other thing you can confuse it with, or many people confuse it with, is the salivary gland, which I'm cutting open right here. And you see how this flakes apart as I cut through it? It's got all these little um, individual kind of sections and it just kind of flake. It looks very flake-like as you pull it apart. And so you do not want to send that in. Then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Again, cutting down. Again, I find it really easy to try to feel. It's kind of, the lymph node is almost kidney shaped and it's going to be nice and firm right in that area you found with your thumbs or at that 10 and two position. If you cut it in half, not a problem. It's going to be right there. You can see that nice little kidney shape. To remove the obex, um, one nice thing, if you have it, is actually a grapefruit knife, but your Havilon works just fine. Instead of grabbing the nervous tissue, it can be easier to grab some of the connective tissue just around it. What you want to do is go all the way around and free that up. part that you really need is where this split occurs. So this is the brain stem. You can see that right here is this bottom part. And this split is what you're going to need. So you can throw this whole thing in. That's totally fine. You can also take a Havilon and just cut right there. As long as you have that split, that's all we need. So just to show you again, the tissues you want to get and get. So this is your obex, again, right where that split happens. You can get your retropharyngeal lymph nodes. They can vary quite a lot in size and color. Uh, this is from a uh, larger buck that's been dead uh, for a week or so and was frozen. And then this is from a smaller fresh deer. And then what you don't want is this large tissue that just kind of falls apart it's in the area this is the salivary gland so we don't want the salivary gland um, you're also going to want some place to put your sample so if you receive a cwd kit from the nevada department of wildlife it's going to look something like this if you didn't receive a, a kit you can just use any sort of ziploc bag to store your sample and then contact the department uh, for the rest of the kit your kit's going to include a couple things for putting your sample in it's going to either include a bag that looks sort of like this. It's called a whirl pack bag that you open just like this. Put your sample in, twist it down. You may all, or you may receive some a plastic container in a plastic bag, open simply like that to put your sample in. With your kit, you're also going to receive two pieces of paper. The first piece of paper is where we collect all your information. So you don't want to fill this out completely um, with all your personal information, where you harvested the animal, the hunt unit, and any information that allows us to get as close as possible to the location of harvest. You're also, you're also going to receive a small card that looks like this with an individual ID number. This is your card. You want to keep a hold of this. This number is how you're going to look up the results of your CWD sample on our website. So once you're done taking your CWD sample, you're going to want to clean off your tools. To kill all the prions, you're going to want to soak it in a 40% solution of household bleach for at least 5 to 10 minutes. I want to thank you again for helping us with CWD surveillance. Um, your participation is invaluable and we really appreciate all you do uh, for Nevada's wildlife.